Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have the 2023 Audi Q5. This one is the premium edition or premium trim. It comes with the 18 inch tires or 18 inch rims. And this color is the Manhattan metallic gray color. It's a nice compact luxury SUV. You can see the sleek lines across the side of the driver and passenger that leads all the way up to the front of the hood to the headlights, the LED headlights. You do have the black grille in the front with the Audi emblem. What I don't like is you can tell the front grill half of it is open and the bottom half is not. I don't like how that looks. The headlights do look ordinary. Nice, uh, nice LED. Get the fog lights on the bottom. Like I said, these are 18 inch rims. All right, the tire is 235.60 and 18 inch. This is a Quattro, so it's all wheel drive. And for this edition, they come with the uh, roof rack option. Let's take a look at the back. See the tail lights, the uh, Q5 on the bottom left, and then the Quattro emblem on the bottom right you can see the dual exhaust on the bottom now let's take a look at the interior of this vehicle and you see you got this plastic uh, door panel trim with the uh, wood over here and you got some leather along this side on the door instrument panels over here which is the window um, the side mirrors you got the unlock and lock and the memory settings what I also like over here is you have the child safety locks that you can control and you can lock on either side instead of how you do it manually in the rear seats and inside the interior it boasts the uh, gray leather seats with the gray stitching Feels comfortable, pretty nice. And along the dash is your regular, uh, regular, just trim, regular material. Now let's turn on this uh, vehicle and we'll go over the interior. Push buttons right here. The steering wheel feels nice. Could be a little bit thicker, but all in all, nice leather around the steering wheel. Got the Audi uh, symbol, the Audi emblem right here. And then here is your uh, scrolling through the menu and also the uh, preset stations. Um, you could view, you know, inside your dashboard. Uh, like the fuel economy, the speed. And on this side, you got the heating steering wheel, definitely a bonus for the winter time. This is your volume setting and also your uh, preset. You can switch the channels. Here's your um, voice recognition, your Bluetooth. And here are your analog clusters, which I do like. All right, the tachometer and also the speedometer. You do have the digital uh, fuel gauge. And on, on the side is the uh, headlights. And you have the uh, paddle shifters in the back right here. Let's move on to this 10.1 inch touchscreen. This allows you to 
you know, cycle through your radio, different settings, uh, navigation. It's very responsive, which is I like. And this does ha come with uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Right now, you can go to the radio. Nice sound system. Here is actually the uh, button for the volume over here in addition to scrolling for the volume down here and along we come down the lines we see the uh, HVAC controls you have the uh, temperature dials over here which I like because it's analog however the mode buttons are here the mode selector you can change the different modes by uh, pressing on it also the fan speed go up it is a three zone system and the same thing, this is for the passenger side. Here's the um, air circulation for inside the vehicle. It is hot outside right now. It's like 90 some degrees in New York. And let's come down here. You got your different drive selection modes. Right, you have one, two, three, four, four modes. Plus, this is your customization as well. You could put this different um, whatever you like the balanced or sport uh, for the uh, for the drive and also you could fix your balance uh, your steering wheel your steering um, adjustments as well so this is your different drive selection mode right now I'll put it in comfort All right and then your automatic start stop and your traction and let's come down here. Uh, this is a little storage space on both over here and here. Not big enough. And you also have your 12 volt charger over here. And this is your gearbox. Pretty meaty. Uh, I do like this square or rectangular gear selector or gear handle on the top. Uh, you do have your different modes right here, or different gears, sorry. Got the park, reverse, neutral, drive, and the parking brake here. And then you got your cup holders over here, two cup holders. And we lead to this big armrest. I like it, you know. The bigger the armrest, the better it feels. And the storage inside is not as big, you know, it's for small stuff. Uh, it's not that deep either. So you can't put too much stuff over here. And then the this let's continue through the dash over here. You got the quattro badge over here. You got your uh, glove box and your different um, well your simpler uh, passenger um, door panel with the um, unlock and lock and also the window function. Coming back to the uh, passenger side seat, there's leather seats. It feels really nice. It's comfy. It's comfortable. Stitching is nice. Right now it's hot because it's got the sun burning on the ladder right now. So all in all, the interior is quite nice. Right now we'll check the rear seats. As you can see, the the door trim continues throughout in the back. You only have the window opener over here on the side. You got your speakers and the gray leather seating and stitching continues in the rear seat as well. Let's check out the leg room right now. Pretty spacious. I have about four inches of leg room, uh, which feels pretty quite comfortable in the back. My head space over here is about two or three inches. So I'm 5'9 once again. It is a compact SUV, but it's a comfortable seating over here for five. Now, here are your vents for the rear passenger and your controls on the uh, fan speed. And you got a 12 volt charger and you some USBs over here. And you, this car does come equipped with the panoramic sunroof. It's a nice feature. And this is the, the sunshade or the roof shade. Uh, if you wanna just open this up, 
you could have a panoramic view. And up here is your door handle. And along this side, the same uh, trim and window button there. All in all, the rear is it's quite spacious. It doesn't feel cramped and the seats feels nice. Let's check out the trunk. As you can see, this is really spacious. Got the uh, all weather cargo mat. I believe this is a little bit over 25 cubic feet of storage space. You could fit quite a bit of stuff over here. The one thing that I don't like is they don't have any storage space, extra storage space below over here. That is just access to the spare tire. And for the chairs, you do have your baby or child anchoring system on the back. And you got a couple more small little storage spots over here. No charger in the back, but I do like that they have these LED lights on either side, which will illuminate when the trunk's open. And for these, these are your manual uh, levers for folding down the back seat here. Let's do that. Boom, you pull it, and these seats go down. What I don't like is there's no way to fold these back up from the rear. You will have to go to the side of the door and either push it all the way down or fold the chairs back up. That's one downside that I do not like about this. However, you can see that it does boast quite a bit of room for cargo for this compact uh, luxury SUV. And here it is. All right, guys, let's take this vehicle out for a drive and let's see how it does. It's my first time driving this uh, Q5. Right now it's smooth in comfort mode. This is the um, premium trim or premium edition. It does boast a uh, 201 horsepower engine, 2.0 liter turbocharger, and it produces 236 pound-feet of torque. Zero to 60 in about seven seconds. Now there's different trim levels. There's the premium, you got the premium plus, and also the prestige. Now this one's a premium, uh, it comes with the 18, 18 inch wheels. Um, it starts around 45 or 46,000 MSRP. And this one over here, after after everything out the door, it's a little bit over 50 grand. Right now, the drive is very comfortable. The seating, the seating is is not the top, but it's uh, it gives you a comfortable ride. It is in comfortable setting or comfort setting. Let's try to switch it up to dynamic. Oh, much better response.
using the paddle shift right now. Let's see how quick this goes. All the Q5 come with the Quattro uh, all-wheel drive. And I believe this one is when you're driving comfort, it automatically is in front-wheel drive to help you save on gas. But then once you step on it, or you switch it to dynamic mode, it switches up for better handling and better grip on the tires or on the road. The steering wheel, although it does have leather, I like it to be a little bit more smoother around the edges. Right now it feels like it's uh, a more of a square rigid edge which doesn't feel quite as comfortable. But the leather does feel nice. We said the sound system. Let me pop off. Leave club, sloppy drunk, come home and get my rise out. Heard from the south, you trying to see me knock your sides out. Told him it's definitely nice quality. Let's go around this guy right now. Let's see how much it goes. Right now the speed, there's some kind of setting here which limits the speed to right below 55 or right at 55. You know what, let's change it to, let's change it to back to comp, oh, maybe uh, auto. Let's see how, um, how responsive or how the downshift will be for this. See when the turbo kicks in. It's like one or two seconds before it throttles down, which is pretty nice. Um, I mean, given it's only uh, 201 horsepower. Right now, I am using the it's in manual mode. Let's put it back in auto right now it's auto let's see let's see how much it will throttle down or well, how quick after this uh, red light up front for changing lane purposes the steering and the handling is quite nice in this uh, SUV because it's compact all right we're on auto mode right now let's see how long it takes to downshift when I step on the gas pedal okay there you go that was like a two second delay. So, it's okay. Um, the power is there. And you can make quick, quick lane changes.
although I wish I do have a little bit more power now uh, just to reiterate there are three different trim levels there the, there's the premium the premium plus and the prestige so right now this is the premium which I said it it has 201 horsepower now if you go up one trim level to the premium plus that will give you an extra 60 horsepower and extra 40, uh, 40 more pound feet of torque which I think that would make this vehicle much better or much more fun to drive based on the performance and the handling I mean, if you're looking for a luxury level compact vehicle, you do have many options, and this is one of them, the Q5. You do also have the Mercedes GLC, and I would say um, I put the uh, BMW X3 alongside of this. I do feel like this is just a little bit or slightly smaller that's what I get the feeling of when I sit inside but like I said the price range the three different trim levels uh, the starting for the premium is around 45 the premium plus will be closer to 49 to 50 and then the prestige is going to be over 52,000 the Prestige now that will give you a much higher uh, horsepower, a much uh, better performance for your engine, which the horsepower will be over 300. Although I do feel like it lacks some technology, it just doesn't look like it's modernized based on what other manufacturers offer that's your Mercedes and BMW all in all I'm, I'm enjoying this ride A nice daily driver and it is pretty fuel efficient as well the fuel economy for this car is 29 highway 23 city and you have a combined 25 now all depends on your uh, driving quality and how you use the vehicle and what condition it is but uh, it's pretty nice, it's pretty decent for the fuel range. They do offer nine different colors or exterior colors on this car and also four different interior colors as well I mean I do like the lighter interior however the the exterior colors uh, I'm not too fond of um, everything is like your different shades of gray black or white and that's it so it's not that many varieties Here are my final thoughts on this vehicle. Oh, let me back up real quick. I forgot to show you the uh, rear view camera. Right here. The quality is very poor. I This is one thing that I do not like. Just wanted to get that out there. 
Um, okay, uh, my final thoughts or final opinion on this vehicle. Um, it's a nice uh, compact SUV. It's the luxury side, the Audi Q5. When I sat in the back, I felt comfortable. It was good enough for my height as an adult, uh, 5'9", uh, 200 pounds. Felt comfortable, the seating is nice, the quality of the interior is great. However, um, there are some downsides, like if you go to this, your infotainment center, your tablet looking touchscreen over here that just looks like it just plopped on top of the dashboard. Um, it's, I don't like that look. It's, it looks cheap that way. Um, it's just a bad design. Like they should have integrated it into the dashboard itself, which would have made much more sense. And it would have not been, it wouldn't have given this look of something just popped onto the dashboard. Um, I do like the the analog controls, at least for the ventilation settings. Um, the steering wheel is nicely uh, stitched up with leather. The driving of this vehicle, um, I'm more of the more performance side, but in an unbiased opinion, um, the premium is very basic, but it does give you a lot more than uh, a lot more standard features or uh, you know and options than other manufacturers with their standard base level. You know, it does offer quite a lot more. You got the parking sensors, the the rear view camera, the adaptive cruise control. Um, Android Auto, everything that you're looking for, you can get in this premium. Um, they made it available in the premium option. Um, when you go up to the premium plus, you do have a bigger size wheel. Uh, I believe it goes to a 19 inch rim. Um, and then obviously it gives you a better, uh, more, more powerful engine. Um, right now for the price range, um, like I said, this does start around mid 40s. Um, I think this is quite around where the other competitors are. Um, out the door is around 50, a little bit over 50. Um, which I don't, I'm not bothered by the uh, the price range because you're in an Audi, you're in a luxury vehicle. Um, but there's actually. In this premium trim there's nothing really special about this if I was a customer and looking for a car I would opt to get the premium plus version instead you just want to be in the middle um, you get the best of both worlds But I do like the rear view mirror, the panoramic sunroof, or the panoramic roof in general. It's a quite nice feature. For the rear passengers to enjoy. But all in all, is this a buy or not buy? I would skip it. Uh, I, I would go to another uh, car manufacturer. I would go probably with either the Mercedes or BMW. Um, but this is an option that you can consider. All right. Well, that's my final thoughts. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate it. I love all your comments that you guys post. Uh, I try to get to every single one of them. Uh, I'm very appreciative of uh, you guys trying to support me. And I enjoy doing all these reviews for you guys. I hope to be able to bring more content to you in the future.
And once again, thank you. And please subscribe. And I'm out.